So now we're to the public comment portion of the meeting. And I do have, I've got a lot of names signed up. I'm going to do my very best to make uh, it possible for as many people to have the chance to address the board as possible. Uh, the way we do that is I've got a sign-up sheet, so when I call your name, please approach the front. Please address the board uh, with your public comments. Um, and then there'll be three minutes for each person that signed up. Again, I can't guarantee, based on the number of people that we have signed up, that we can get to everybody. I'm just going to start with the first name. Uh, if you choose not to use your entire three minutes, that's okay. Uh, if, if you hear the timer on my phone go off, that would be your indication that your three-minute time limit is up and it's time to allow somebody else to be able to speak. So with that said, uh, I'll call the first name on the list. I apologize if I uh, don't pronounce your name correctly. I'm going to do my best based on, uh, based on what I see here on the, on the piece of paper. But the first person to speak is Laura Rose. Is Laura Rose available to speak? Thank you. Hello. I live here in Oconee County. I'm a reader. My mom was a librarian children's librarian. I have two assumptions that I want to make to begin with and the first assumption and one of those assumptions is is that all of you are citizens and that all of the members of your local boards are also citizens of the United States. That's my first assumption. My second assumption is that all of you are well intended about the library. I don't think any of you have an agenda that you're trying to promote at the library that is of a political nature. So those are my first two assumptions about whether we have or need a new Citizens Advisory Board. We already have one. And that's you and your people back home. My next comment I would like to apply about why some people may be calling for an additional Citizen Advisory Board. And it seems to me that one of the reasons that people are afraid they're afraid that if a child reads a book that might be inappropriate to their parent, somehow that book is going to cause them damage. Well, as far as I know, and I could be wrong about this, no book, no idea, no opinion has ever killed anyone. People kill people. People kill people. Not books, not ideas, not opinions. No one has been change from being homosexual to heterosexual because of a book. No one has ever gone to the hospital because of a book, or because of an idea, or because of their opinion. And it seems to me that if we have issues with books, our best opportunity is not to read it. And if we have issues of other people's children reading a book, we should let their parents exercise their parental rights and make that decision. Yes. If we're worried about our children's safety, let's stop blaming the stranger danger. It's not stranger danger. That's not the main source of a child's vulnerability. It's Cousin Matthew. It's, it's Brother Mark. It's Pastor Luke. It's Father John. It's people they know. And they need to learn how to say no to the person that's familiar to them. So there are books out there that can help a young child learn how to say no. I'm all for them. And I would think people who care about their children's safety would also be for them. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I will say I apologize. We don't, we don't have an ability for somebody to have a microphone here today. I don't have a microphone, and, and as the public speakers don't have a, a microphone either to addressing. But, Lord, thank you for being very clear. And, and I don't hear very well, so thank you for speaking in a volume that, that I was able to hear. Um, so I'll move to the next uh, name on the list, again, uh, Lisa Donovan. Great. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak today, and I'll use notes. I'm not quite so eloquent. Um, I've been an active patron of the Athens Regional System for about 30 years. Uh, however, I've recently become aware that there are some controversies brewing, and so I'd like to height a few things in three different categories. Uh, categories I'll call policies, things I appreciate, and maybe a few concerns. 
So with policies, when I've gone looking for what uh, policies of the library, I support the mission statement, emphasizing providing resources to all communities, mem members of the community. It's consistent with the time-honored American Library Association and their support of the constitutional right to free speech within the limits of the law. I support the clear statement that the responsibility for patrons use of the library resources rests solely with the patron or minor, minor's parents and not with the library. And I wholeheartedly support the policy that all children under 10 must be accompanied and actively supervised at all times by a responsible adult. I think that sets a good balance of accessibility and responsibility. As far as things I appreciate based on my personal experience with the system, I really appreciate the library employees. They are professionals. They do their jobs really effectively, and I'm just so grateful that they're there. Second, I appreciate that while funding is always limited, the funds have been used to create a collection and curate a collection that encourages discourse and lifelong learning for the entire community. Um, not just me, not just somebody else, but the entire community. And third, I appreciate that the procedure for citizen input and challenging materials is clear and includes a review by a committee of professionals and a decision by the relevant board members. I think that's appropriate. To, for concerns, I have two. First, that there are reports that our library employees are being harassed for doing their job, and I, that breaks my heart. Threats and name calling are inexcusable, and I appreciate that the board, in the minutes of some of the meetings, support um, calls for civility and let the citizens know, let us know how we can help because that's just unexcusable. And second, I'm concerned that there may be a proposal for a citizens committee to be involved in the material selection or reconsideration, presumably as a means to limiting availability of resources that don't align with their viewpoint. I strongly object to such a citizens committee. It's not necessary in my opinion and potentially could be harmful to the mission of the library depending on how it's used. In summary, I think our community has been very well served by the library system. Going forward, my friends and I will be more proactive in protecting it as a treasure for the a treasured resource for the community, and I really appreciate your service. Thank you, Lisa. The next thing on the list is Dan Matt. I will pass these people said everything I need to say. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> All right, the following name is Rita Kelly. Excuse me. Um, Rita Kelly, um, Clark County, and avid user of the library. Um, I don't know what we have come as a country. We're afraid of everything anymore. Um, I always think that the U.S. used to be a can-do, will-do, we're fine kind of country, and now we're scared of our shadows. And I don't understand being scared of books. It reminds me of, which I hate to say, but Nazi Germany. It reminds me of the regulation and the uh, banning and the burning of books. And there, I, I'm more scared or afraid that there aren't kids at the library. I don't understand. I go to the library quite often, days, nights. I don't see kids there. And I don't understand why we're afraid of a child reading a book in a library. I mean, most of the time you can't get them off tablets and, and computers and everything else. So to me, it's almost just ridiculous because I'm a previous uh, retired school psychologist, and a reading is a necessity, and we don't do enough to get our kids reading, let alone banning books. I also feel like, um, as a colleague of mine said, we need to protect the public interests versus private interests. Just because you have a private interest doesn't mean it should impact all of us as public citizens. And I'm afraid things like that will. I always thought, too, people who, right or left, but radical um, extremism on the right has always been this huge thing about family values, family values. Well, if you are a family that values your uh, taking care of your kids and being with your children, then you will be monitoring their reading and you will decide what's appropriate or not appropriate. And I don't understand this, that you think you need to monitor our books when uh, you should be caring about your own books, uh, your own family's books. 
So I would say no citizens committee necessary. Um, I'm against all kinds of book banning or book regulation. Thank you. Next name on this is Pat Peterson. Right. I'll just speak from here because it's going to be short. I speak, I live in Clark County, and I speak to the issue of restricting or banning books. If someone enters the library and they want to browse the topic, if the book is not on the open shelves, then in effect it is banned from them, unless they know what topic, uh, what specific title to ask for in a restricted area. It's important that we allow people to make their own choices about books and to also make a, a choice for their young children. So please do not restrict books and certainly don't ban any of them. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Next name is Richard Daniels. Hello, uh, my name is Richard Daniels. I live in Athens in Clark County. Uh, I raised two boys uh, with my wife. Uh, we raised two boys in the area. Um, we lived in, uh, we were uh, residents and homeowners in um, Oglethorpe County and Madison County as well. And, uh, and so the idea of this regional library system uh, has served our family extremely well. Um, um, one county, one organization can't do this can't have the kind of resources that that, that uh, we all enjoy as a as a as a regional library system, uh, and so um, uh, that's to say uh, uh, we we've done it right. We all have done it right. Um, we've got a great system. Um, we've got a great system as a regional library. Our individual branches are also uh, excellent and. Um, uh, and are being used, and, and, and you as a board and we as citizens have kept the library, uh, the library relevant in a time when, you know, maybe 10 years ago, I, even I would have thought that maybe everything's going virtual, maybe, maybe libraries are obsolete. Our Athens Regional Library System is, is, is thriving. It's, it's, it's a thriving resource uh, of enlightenment in all corners of these five counties, and I really appreciate that. I really appreciate the people in the system uh, who who uh, who make that happen. Uh, I've read the book selection procedure and the book review procedure, uh, and I think it's right on. Uh, I think if it's if, if those aren't broken, uh, we need to keep keep that good system in place. Um, I echo the comments of my colleagues who. Uh, are concerned about uh, uh, library employees taking the brunt of some complaints. Uh, I think that's a terrible shame. Uh, and um, I just want to thank you as a board for keeping this library vibrant. And, and, and let's, by all means, keep it open, keep it a diverse resource for all members of our community. Thank you. So the next name is Kathy Lynn Sanderson. Okay, hi, um, Kathy Lynn Sanderson. Um, I'm a resident of Athens, Clark County. I'm very familiar with the library. I'm a, a, a patron a lot. And I was on the Friends of the Library Board, so I'm very familiar with the operation of the library system. The regional system, I think, is absolutely wonderful. I think, thank you all for your service. I think the staff in the library is excellent and wonderful. Obviously, they're very highly trained professionals. I think we should leave the decisions to the highly trained professionals and not hand it over to a board of citizens that whatever agenda they may have. And I want to repeat what a number of people have said, but I think if people are concerned about what their children are reading, the most effective way for them to do it is pay attention to their children and not go meddling in what other people's children are reading. And I am a lawyer, and what I learned in law school about free speech and free access is 
the remedy to uh, troublesome speech is more speech. And I think that's probably true about literature, too, that the, uh, the problem, if there's a problem with some book, that the, it's more books. It's not cutting them out. And just on a really practical note, I remember when I was a kid, maybe it was a while back, but if you said to me and my friends when I was a certain age, oh, don't read that book, I mean, that'd be the first one to be read. No, who remembers um, Catcher in the Rye? They all wanted that book because it had swear words in it. And so I think the idea of telling children, oh, you can't get this book out of the library, is misplaced. And thank you again for your service. Next uh, name on the least, uh, list is Lisa, is it Mindy? Yeah. Hi there. I, I apologize initially because I am a native New Yorker and I'm just not as polite. <laughs> so you'll forgive me on uh, my particular style of expressing myself. So I want to say, uh, to begin with, there are certain folks with whom I differ on a couple of tiny inconsequential things. The first being that they have absolutely no right to decide what my children may read, anyone else's children for that matter. They are completely within their rights to choose reading matters for their own children until, of course, their children reach the age of majority. And at that point, they'll be wearing their RuPaul t-shirts and reading Catcher in the, uh, Catcher in the Rye and um, Story of O to their parents. <laughs> um, the other uh, minor matter is that we just have a wee difference of opinion as to what obscenity means. Um, I find the choice, the desire to inhibit people from allowing their children to make choices is much, much more obscene than hearing a four-letter word in a book or finding out that Mary has two mommies. Um, in conclusion, let the librarians who actually went to university to become a librarian do their jobs without these purient snouts breathing over their shoulders. <laughs> Don't voice your narrow-minded, faux Christian, un-American beliefs on anyone else's family but your own. That's all I got to say. Next name on the list is Mark, and I, I don't, I'm not sure about the last name. It's Mark. Evans. Evans? Okay, yeah. thank you. How am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> My name is Mark Evans, um, and uh, I live in athens Clark County. I sit on the Board of Education. I'm the Vice President of the Board. Um, but I'm here today because I'm Jack and Tilly's dad. And I don't want anyone to tell me how to raise my kids. And I don't want anyone to tell me what my kids can and cannot read other than me. That is my job. That is a sacred obligation given to me and in my religion from God right, to expose them to the world and have them see the world as it is. I do not want a citizen's advisory board to make these decisions for you. We have placed this trust in you, and you have placed that trust into the librarians. The librarians that have spent multiple years in university go to multiple different trainings, to ensure the quality of the information that goes to our children. So while I, I thank you for your service, and I know that this is going to be a tough slog because these folks are loud. I know. I see them. I hear them. That comment list, I, I get that comment list all the time. And uh, I, I appreciate you holding the line for democracy. And I appreciate you as a parent for allowing me to do my job and be the parent to Jack and Tilly. Thank you. Next thing on the list is Patrick Conley. Oh, I want to thank everyone here, and I want to honor all the work you do 
to make information free and available to the public. It says public library. So that's all of us. Um, I've raised two beautiful children, Madison County, Athens Clark, and Oconee. And the idea that another parent could limit the availability of knowledge to my children is abhorrent and I believe antithetical to the word liberty. And I'll just close with a simple metaphor. <clears throat> now I personally, I cannot stand anchovies. <laughs> They are repulsive and repugnant, and the idea of putting one in my mouth makes me gag. But I would never be so, just, ah, I'm blanking on the word, um, arrogant to go to the local pizza shop and demand they take anchovies off the menu. I can choose not to do it. <laughs> but that's my choice. And again, I want to thank y'all, what other people have said. Thank you for holding the line to keep information free and available to all the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so... The next name on the list, Andrea Wellknight. Can I get close? Andrea Wellknight. Hi. Um, I think you'd know why we're all here, and it's not because there's sexually explicit material in these library books. I mean, if that was really the case, then pretty much the whole young adult section, you'd have to move that over into the adult section of the library, right? I mean, that's really what we're talking about. So what we're talking about here is that there's all these book challenges that we're hearing about, I mean, they have a common theme in them, all right? So it's about families who are LGBTQ plus and their stories, right, and children. So that's what we're really talking about here. This is one of the issues that's coming up. And unfortunately, I think that this is gonna be talked about for a while. I don't think that there's any end in sight. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry to say that. But um, because every single time one of these challenges happens and the book gets moved, you know, there's a win, and so there's more, there's more challenges that come up, and every single time that they don't win, you know, then there's just more push and more drive, like, okay, we have to fight harder, right? We have to do more emails, we have to reach out more, we have to get these books moved off of these shelves, because we don't want to see them here. They need to be over there in the adult section of the library, or maybe in another room, I heard that at the last meeting, or, you know, let's just put them back in the closet, right? So, um, library is all about. The library, when I went online and I looked at your mission statement, you know, the library is here for all families, so that all families feel like they belong here. And it's your job as a board to make sure that that mission is carried out, right? So your job is to support the people that are working at the library, doing the work, providing the resources, bringing those books, you know, so that families can access them, having those programs available so that all families feel like they belong here because all families belong here. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that it's relevant this week to quote Martin Luther King because, you know, it's this week. And so he said that um, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Um, hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And I really hope that as a board, when you're serving on this board, that you're really working hard to drive out this darkness and hate because I know you're feeling it. You're hearing it, you're feeling it, and I'm sorry that, that you're in that position, but but that's your role right now, right? And I hope that you, you know, just work to really shed light on what the real issue is here and that you continue to stand up for love. Thank you. Next name on the sign up list is Tina Mills. Hi, I'm Tina Mills. Thanks everybody for being here and thanks for your service. And I've already heard everything in my wonderfully prepared speech from all my friends out here. 
So I just want to say that I sit on the City Council of Winterville, and I have full faith in our librarian, Deidre Murray, and I have full confidence in all the decisions that she makes for our library, and I don't think she needs any help, and we do not want, need, desire any help with her making decisions for our library, so thank you so much. Next name is Mark, is it Vanala? I'm sorry. Yeah. Howdy. Um, I'd first like to say that I appreciate uh, how well spoken and thoughtful everyone's been. It's uh, it's really heartwarming, and I appreciate you all very much expressing yourselves about this uh, very important issue. I'm a resident. I live right down the road from here, and uh, I've lived all over the country and been a library fan and patron for my entire life. Libraries have meant a great deal to me and my family, my extended family, my friends, and I believe to the nation. It's a little discouraging that times the uh, maybe reliance on library resources slipping away, and I do believe that some of the uh, partisanship and, and uh, control issues are exacerbating that. Uh, I'd like to see that, you know, return to a more equitable situation. The um, board has done a fantastic job. The Librarians, as everyone's mentioned, are wonderful. The whole system here is incredible. And it provides a great amount of information and uh, uh, all kinds of uh, positive influence and things that, we, that go beyond what any of us can even see for children and, and uh, generations moving down the road. One of the best parts of any library I've been to has always been the history section. And history will teach us with even a cursory reading that allowing partisan fascists uh, overly constrained religious uh, and similar influences on what we read, what we think, what we can see, what we experience is literally the start to the road for the death of intellect and society. I can't uh, underline how serious this is to me and obviously everyone here. Thank you for what you do. I don't think you need a bit of help to decide <laughs> what's going on with us. Right, uh, next name is Glenn Level. Hi, my name is Glenn Level. My wife and I live in Athens where we raised our two children, now in college with support of the public schools and the public library. I appreciate this opportunity to address the board. Public libraries which provide free community access to books, newspapers, and other information more broadly play a critical role in our democratic and free society. With that in mind, I want to express my support for our library's current collection development policy which holds, quote, which, quote, upholds the right of the individual to secure information, even though the content of that information may be controversial, unorthodox, or unacceptable to others, end quote. The policy also correctly supports the broad, quote, informational, educational, cultural, and recreational needs of the general population of the region, end quote. As such, I believe that everyone should expect to be able to find and see themselves reflected in the library, but everyone should also expect to find 
see and discover the ideas of people unlike themselves. This ability to discover and access a broad spectrum of ideas and representations aren't exclusive, that aren't exclusively our own is an essential feature of our libraries. It's a feature that will, if we take full advantage of it, both surprise and challenge us. It's also a feature that will at times offend us. In fact, if we aren't offended from time to time, then our libraries probably aren't doing their jobs very well. So I'd like to thank both the board and the staffs of our libraries for doing their jobs well and for their continued support of a mission that includes providing our community with resources that encourage discovery, imagination, and lifelong learning. Thank you. All right, next is Sarah Bow. Maybe I'm mispronouncing it, okay. It's okay, it's a hard last name. Um, hello, uh, I'm a resident of athens Clark County, and I have two kids, one of whom is here, she's in fifth grade, and I have a senior at Clark Central. And um, the library system in Athens is something that's incredibly important to me. I feel like libraries give me faith in humanity. Um, when things are really dark, and when we thought a library, we had this whole entire idea based on making sure that we all, and I mean all, have access to information and amazing programming for our children, for our teenagers. Um, one thing that I feel very strongly about is lack of information is um, much more dangerous than information. I don't think, as one of the previous people said, that accessing any of these books will hurt any children. What I do know and what we've heard from many, many voices of adults who were previously children is that not seeing your own life, your own family, your own fear, any of those things reflected in the literature available to you, in the media available to you, is harmful. Having your life banned has repercussions. So, as a parent to two children who I have been pleased to watch grow up and become their own people, whether I enjoy those people or not. <laughs> I want to support the fact that there is information out there that I may not even know that they need. And so anyway, thank you, library, for existing. I apologize on behalf of my fellow citizens to all of the library staff who have had to endure any abuse, um, and I do not support a citizen's advisory board. Thank you. Lisa Freeman. Um, my name is Lisa Freeman. And I live in athens Clark County. And I just became concerned uh, how books were going to be chosen for our library system. I don't know how much I have to add, except um, for me, the library was the one place I knew that I could go that I was welcome. I was a lonely kid. And I knew that I would go to a library and I was surrounded by the carriers and the voices and the, the stories of everyone. And that's what the library needs to be. It needs to be stories of everyone. And there needs to be no exclusion. And I guess that's all I have to say. Chris Irwin. Good afternoon, my name is Chris Irwin. I'm a citizen of Madison County. I'm a firm believer in the library system, and I believe that a citizen's board is not necessary. I wanted to read to you a definition of liberty. The state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority of one's, on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. The public library is for the public, as it's been said by so many people. Keep it that way for everyone, and do not restrict any books unless gone through the proper process, which I agree is very strong and reliable. A good friend of mine is an employee of the library system, and she is on that board of review. So I understand the whole process, and 
thank you for what you do and serve on this board as volunteers. I have served on many as volunteer in terms of, I know the pressures and the time commitment it takes. So thank you very much for your service. Will Watley. Hey, uh, my name is Will. I, uh, I'm a county resident. We live just up the road. And um, just wanted to share uh, my perspective. Um, I agree completely with really everything that's been said here. And I want to say from my perspective as a uh, father of three adult children, who none of whom love anchovies, unfortunately. <laughs> Try as we might. Uh, that's a fact. But I'm looking for how to get them back in the county. And uh, if you can find a book on that, I would appreciate that too. Um, however, as a retired military officer, um, I would like to say I've seen a lot of things around the world. And our library system is being commended. Uh, it's a source of power. It's a source of strength. Restricting ideas does not prepare anyone to include our children or adults for life or the world. From a perspective of where I sat, we needed people that had more divergent ideas, not less. So I encourage you, thank you for what you're doing as volunteers. Uh, you're under fire sometimes, I appreciate that. Uh, please understand that you're doing a moral and ethical duty to maintain the integrity of the country. Thank you very much. Allison, is it Unsworth? Oh, that might be me. I, I'm, thank you so much, but I can't say anything any better than that. <laughs> so I'll give somebody else some time. Thank you, Allison. Well, you were actually the last name. There was oh, another. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that, that was approximately 40 minutes of public comment, so I'll just say that that closes the public comment portion, but, but thank you. Thank you for your public comments. Thank you for uh, being respectful in those comments and, and kind of for following the rules, right, and addressing the board and keeping to your time limits, and thank you for, for your thoughts and, and your expressions in that. So with that, we do need to move onward with the remainder of our agenda today, but thank you again for your, for your public co comments. The next item on the agenda is uh, to accept the financial report uh, for fiscal year 2024, quarter two. I don't see Lori here either. Usually that's your, uh, your green sheet paper, right? Yeah. So, um,
over. Um, pretty significantly. I assume there was some unexpected expense, or I wonder if it was the salt the new accounting software or something. Uh, well, yes, that's part of it. Um, that it's gone over. We're taking a, a closer look at that and wondering if um, some of the uh, some of the computer software maintenance should be in actually in supplies to computers and computers but yes, ADP is, is certainly um, a factor. Yeah, I kind of figured that was the, the chunk, but I figured I'd at least ask. Lori's okay. found several things that were in the right category. Right. So we're working on cleaning all of that up, and you know, it'll get. It's getting better and better, as I'm sure you all can see. Do we need to revise the budget? Uh, not at this point. We may wind up amending the budget next quarter. If that's okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Can you tell us what exactly it goes into, and, and this may be a better question for Lori, the professional fees and contract labor, is that also like the consultants that we use? Yes, those are consultants and uh, people that we've used. Um, as you know, we, we've hired an attorney, um, and so that's coming out of that. Uh, we've had some, uh, some, some help with our accounting, mm -hmm. and, and so that's come out of that. Um, and so, yes, basically the professional fees and contract labor has been uh, the, the source of those, those contracts that we've made. Any other questions? Move for approval. Okay. I'll second. We got a motion and a second to uh, accept, I'll say, the uh, financial report. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion? All in, say, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you all. <coughs> so we'll now move on to the uh, regional reports. Um, we'll start with Athens Park County. Yeah. Uh, actually, fairly brief. Um, the friends have announced that their book sale will uh, begin on March the uh, 16th, 2024. Looking forward to another successful one. Wintervolt had a particularly sweet report this time. Uh, they've started a new chess program uh, for the kids, which I thought was wonderful. Or not just me. A lot of people thought it was wonderful. Then they were doing some things on the building itself. I think there was some floor repair because. There had not been a moisture barrier under part of the library, but anyway, that's all being attended to. And then they started a project that much, sounds much like StoryCorps to me. Um, they're uh, gathering stories from patrons about what they like about the library, and then they'll be um, sharing those with other folks at different times. And I think that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Next on regional report should be Franklin County. Yes. So um, it was a bit of a mixed bag this quarter. We were down in circulation of patrons, but we actually had a branch closed for six weeks. So Livonia branch, if you're unaware, there was a car accident that took out a phone pole. There were some power surges. The wiring was a whole big hot mess. So um, after calling in experts, um, <coughs> due to smoke and, and whatnot in the library. They did have to shut down for six weeks. That was some pretty extensive, pretty expensive repair work. Um, so in terms of just looking at the statistics of the library, we were down. However, programming initiatives have gone really well um, for adults and children's programming. We do have a new children's specialist coming on in Royston. Um, we've got some of our adult programming that's expanded. The Crochet Club, I think, is, is one of them that's growing. So I'm um, pretty pleased overall. Um, we are also rebuilding some um, initiatives and relationship with the Franklin County Board of Education, who's not necessarily um, been a partner in the last few years with COVID and everything that's transpired. I think many of us are looking to kind of rebuild how can we support our local education systems? And so there was a really productive meeting with the school superintendent uh, by a select group from the Franklin County Board. 
and we're going to be invited to have further discussion with them, um, potentially to talk about additional funding and <coughs> some partnership opportunities. So we're really pleased. Thank you, Madison County. Um, <clears throat> As I mentioned at the last regional meeting, we were um, recently uh, the recipients of not one but two generous gifts from a former patron who passed away, uh, Mrs. Ruth Webb. Um, we are exploring ways to invest that money that is most advantageous but still within the scope of the law. <laughs> we are finding that there are some constraints related to how we can invest that money as a uh, entity of local government. So we are working towards that just to make sure that the money is you know, um, available for as long as possible. Um, we unfortunately have kind of stalled out in our discussions of uh, expanding the play card into our school systems. We've gotten really close to that. Um, there was some point of contention in the opt-in versus out for our students. But we're hoping to follow Clark and Oconee in the near future with that. It is something that we're really interested in and invested in. Uh, and then we do have a new applicant being sent forward to the Board of Commission. We are really excited about that. And of course, as the trend has been, once we fill a seat, we get a seat. So we are going to have another vacancy um, starting in March. So we are looking around. If you know anyone else in Madison County who would like to serve, we would like to have them. So, uh, all of our numbers were up for this quarter and um, just going smoothly. Thank you. So I will uh, give the uh, Oconee County report. Um, I'll say that uh, since our last meeting, the uh, former Watkinsville branch of the Oconee County Library uh, closed uh, for the move to this location. So you are here, uh, and we are excited. Um, we're excited about finishing things up and being open to the public there because a lot of work that has gone in for this new library facility at this location. Uh, hopefully other members of the region can and maybe see what the vision has been and, and also not being uh, maybe as traditional as a standalone uh, library, but, but part of a, a larger gathering place where people in the community can come. Uh, we're hoping that the uh, housing currently under construction between us and Barnett Shoals Road will be filled with lots of library volunteers. Uh, <laughs> so we're excited. And also at the same time, we have another library branch in Oconee County that's in Bogart. Every time I've been to that Bogart branch, since uh, the uh, former Watkinsville branch closed, it's been very busy because instead of supporting just a portion of the county, it's been supporting the entire county. So I'm sure staff at the Bogart branch will be very thankful uh, when this branch reopens and, and we, can, we can have services uh, throughout the county as well. So again, thank you all. Oglethorpe County. Yeah. <clears throat> I initially like to say that Oglethorpe County Library is still in the same place, so you will be welcome. <laughs> uh, we've had uh, the Friends of the Library have been very active and very supportive. They've had a number of programs, uh, book sales, and other craft sales that have uh, supported, and they've been very successful in that. Uh, and they've also reached out to wider business community enlisting um, members uh, to support the, support the library. Uh, at the library, we've had a number of children's programs that have been very successful. Uh, the Lascari Week, which we put on before, which involved games and crafts and included staff and costume. I walked in and didn't quite recognize our uh, branch manager when I first saw her, so very successful on that. We also had the drive through uh, trunk or treat in our parking lot, in which people, uh, parents came by with their children and they were given free books and a treat. The free books having been uh, provided by the Friends of the Library. Had a number of Christmas events and we've had several outreach programs, uh, including programs at the local school, uh, at the Rotary Club, and Actually, we had uh, appearance of several members of the staff, including the regional staff, at the Maxi's Christmas Parade. Happened to know that because I was working the parking lot. <laughs> Surprise, but that was very helpful. We also had adult programs, uh, Lunch and Learn, which is also supported by Friends of the Library, an open book club, 
and then a program called Afternoon Unwind for Adults. Just so you know, we only serve coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, uh, we've been very busy and appreciate the support of the community that we've had. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right, on to the uh, director's report. Oh, good afternoon. Um, I'll make this as brief as I can. Uh, we've had some time working with ADP, uh, that's the company that is outsourcing our payroll. Uh, Lori Lavengood, who is not here today, and Sue Quinn, who is here today, Assistant Director uh, Sue Quinn, have been working very hard to get this process up and running. Uh, you know, it's uh, so often uh, these, these large companies make it sound like it's going to be an easy process to get through, but uh, we have found that we've had to do quite a bit of work to, uh, to move that process through. And so both Lori and Sue have worked extremely hard to uh, make that happen. Uh, the next step with the ADP process is getting all of our staff to register their time electronically. They'll be able to do that on their telephones, from uh, some of them from other locations, um, and uh, that should be easy. Also on their phone, they'll be able to see their W-2, their time sheets, they can request time off. So we're really moving into a, uh, a new, new era for our timekeeping and our uh, payroll. Um, let's see. Uh, the Athens Regional Library Strategic Plan activities uh, we put on the table for everyone to see, for the board to take a look at. I believe it was mail, too. I hope so. Maybe not. Um, but these are the activities that the regional board, the regional staff, have decided on uh, that we're going to try and get accomplished as many as we can uh, for through the end of this fiscal year. I have to give many thanks to our executive assistant, uh, Teresa um, Price, because she is the one that actually is keeping us on track. She created a project management campaign for us for each one of these objectives and activities so that we can uh, keep track of where we are, where we need to be, and uh, if we need to make changes in the timeline, we'll be able to do that. So I, I would like to thank uh, Teresa for that. I also wanted to thank our collections manager, Lindsay Josie, who is here today and uh, one of the people that we can congratulate and uh, for all of her hard work with uh, some of the issues that the Athens Regional Library System has been going through and her support and dedication uh, to that. But uh, recently, in addition to all of that, uh, she's recently with her team rolled out an uh, online streaming source called Hoopla. I don't know how many of you are aware of Hoopla, but now we have Hoopla as part of our Athens Regional Library System. Um, and you can stream uh, DVDs, movies, uh, CDs, uh, books on tape, in addition to Libby, uh, and all kinds of other things. So please take a look at that uh, at our Hoopla and uh, if you are currently using Netflix or Prime, you may want to see if it's available on Hoopla for free with your library card. Um, staff Development Day was actually very, very successful this year. I want to thank Nikkei, who's, you can wave your hand, is in the audience, and Ashley, who's in the audience. Uh, they were our co-chairs for Staff Development Day, which was uh, extremely uh, successful across the region, um, surpri not surprisingly, but we're here, so I can share that the Oconee County Library staff, uh, they won the Most Valuable Team Award, and Jessica Simpson, I don't know if Jessica is here right now, uh, but Jessica, if you see her, she won the Staff of Distinction Award, and so uh, congratulations and kudos to them. Uh, I'm also asking, and we can talk about this at some point, to meet with the uh, with the finance committee uh, and the executive board for uh, uh, to go over budgeting and financial procedures. Uh, we've also enlisted the aid of the uh, enlisted the aid of accountant uh, Patty Algo to help us with that. So I will be in touch to talk about uh, this board 
uh, this board's financial committee to uh, start working with us a little closer on uh, some of the things that um, that we need to get done. Uh, the legislative day for Georgia Libraries has not yet been announced. Uh, when it is, I will let you know, and perhaps we can uh, get another um, van uh, for staff to attend and, and board members to attend. Uh, new board member orientation will likely take place in March. Uh, every year we have uh, orientation either done by uh, Julie Walker, our, our uh, state librarian, or one of her assistants, our deputy state librarians. So uh, we'll probably, we have a lot of new board members. Uh, I had initially thought that we could go to each one and just do them separately, uh, but it's, we're getting more and more of them, so I think it may be wise to just have another uh, uh, major um, orientation in place for all the new board members. Um, we have st new state mileage fees. They're not, they don't seem like they've changed very much from last year, but those need to be, um, those are an action item. Um, and obviously the grand opening for Coney Park is uh, going to be a soft opening. Uh, we're not going to be doing any speeches or anything with the weather and making sure that we have all the equipment that we need. Uh, so we'll probably do a grand opening for a Coney sometime in the spring. Uh, but we will be open February 3rd at 10 o'clock. And there's all kinds of wonderful activities that are going to be going on all day. So I hope everyone uh, please tries to make that. Um, we are looking to, uh, we have listened to, to what some of our patrons are saying. I appreciate everything that everyone said here. Uh, and we are looking at ways to, uh, to make the library accessible to as many people as possible um, and to provide that kind of access. So uh, we will be talking with the, our selectors and uh, the management team of the library to uh, to make sure that we're providing access in the best way that we can to support uh, parents of all uh, children and continuing to have the books in the library that need to be there. Um, I've updated, we've updated the patron responsibilities and conduct policy um, and there is a new banning policy for the board's review. Uh, and I hope you all have had a chance to take a look at that. And that sends my report. Thank you, Val. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to respond. Any questions for Val and her director, Ms. Ward? All right, here none. We'll move to the uh, committee reports. I know. Uh, one of our members of our finance committee is not here, but I don't believe we have a finance committee report, but based on the uh, new business action items, some of the things that I've said in the director's report, I would expect there will be a finance committee report at our next quarterly meeting. Um, is there, I'll just go down the list here to see if there's any uh, reports or updates from any of these committees, so I'll start with personnel. Okay. Uh, usually we don't have it this meeting for, for personnel um, policy. We're going to discuss the, we'll call it the patron behavior policy. Patron behavior policy, yes. And I think there were some questions about that. Okay. Or they may have been answered. So, yeah, uh, would you, do you want to discuss it now or later? Which which is the best? I, I think uh, just as we're going through this on the, on the policy reports, it would help be helpful to me if we go ahead and talk about this now. Okay. Um, I don't have a printed copy of it here, but I can pull it up. Um, I was able to communicate some, I had some, I'm on the policy committee, and I had some concerns about some of the um, possible interpretations of um, some of the policy. A lot of the concerns were answered in a response by one of the assistant directors that was, that was very um, helpful. Um, so I still have a little bit of issue with some of the language in it. However, I, I and I understand that uh, 
there's very minor edits that they're being asked about. However, I, I, I think the policy before could have been looked at too, right? Being asked to look at the whole entity. Um, it was very helpful for me to have to see the patron responsibilities and conduct banning matrix. So I would suggest adding that to the policy so that people can see that and it is public on the website just like it is like the policy itself is. Uh, just <coughs> already I didn't look on the website, but having been sent the um, the patron behavior policy, it's helpful to see what the progress is of the incidents and how the escalation is. Right, so just for clarification, when we're talking about patron behavior as part of the policy, and just a clarification on, on what some of those expected behaviors are. Every branch is different, but we want to make sure our staff is, is protected as well. But I think, just, just for clarification, I think I've seen the email you did, but I'm not sure that everybody. So there is a matrix that kind of articulates uh, you know what a first offense would be, what a second offense would be. You know, is that that's a, a clarification? And I don't believe it's currently specifically attached to the personal behavior policy. It may be somewhere else with it. With it. It's it's considered a guideline. Okay. I would recommend making an attachment and including it would be my recommendation so that everyone is on the same page, um, and that there's an understanding of the process as it advances. Um, my issues were things that I felt like could be perceived as um, being towards certain individuals or, or types of individuals, um, things like uh, uh, foul smell, I can't remember the exact thing, but I just want to be sure that we're not, that we're being inclusive in our policies as well. And I think having the matrix sets everyone up for the same um, expectations so that it's not as much up for I, I don't know it just didn't sit quite right with me I didn't I thought that I know it's a tricky line to walk but I also as a public building you know when it's 18 degrees out or when it's very hot I, I, I hate to turn people away especially if that's their avenue into the library and their avenue into our services um, because of a smell or what bags they're carrying. I understand there's, I want there to be a safety parameters within that, but I just want to be cognizant of that. And I also think that since we have an on staff social worker, that there are times where maybe perhaps some of those things make more sense. And, and I think that could be included in the verb of warning in the first time is referring them as well to those resources, which I think is done, but I'd like to see that articulated in the policy as well. Okay. So those are my concerns. Um, those are our guidelines that our staff has. Uh, the social worker is at the Athens Clark County branch, um, and some of the issues that the Athens Clark County uh, branch is uh, Baxter Street are specifically to support our staff. Um, they also support the staff in other um, the our other uh, counties. Um, in that they have a, a voice or a, something to back them up if something should happen at their location. Um, but the, the issues that we are experiencing uh, in Athens Park County, uh, the, uh, the, the behaviors are the behaviors. We are not attacking or looking to uh, uh, look towards any one group of people. Everyone is invited to stay in the library and to be in the library, and they are, uh, and they are all the time. Uh, there are behaviors, though, uh, that we find challenging for our staff, and we have to address those in the behavior policy. And this is not, this isn't a new behavior policy. This, is, this one was just tweaked a little bit. We've had this behavior policy in place for quite a few years, uh, at least seven or eight, and um, uh, the, so the behavior hub policy has been in place for quite some time. The matrix has been, matrix has been in place for quite some time. Uh, we review that on a regular basis to make sure that it is fair. Um, and the staff guidelines uh, for what you do, you know, everyone gets a first warning. Everyone gets a second warning. 
everyone gets that third warning, and that third warning may be the time that we're, we ask them to leave for the day, one day, um, until they can uh, come back and, and uh, abide by the behavior. Uh, this doesn't happen very often in, um, in the other uh, county libraries. Well, and as part of the regional board, so also in the interest of, uh, and on the policy committee as part of acting in the region, uh, reviewing the whole policy despite it being just tweaked, uh, offering my opinion, it's just that, everyone votes however they want to vote. I just, uh, I think that the matrix provided a lot of context that was missing from the policy. So I don't think it was, um, inappropriate how it's laid out in the escalation. I think it's generous. I just think that it's important context when looking at the policy. So we can, we can talk about that a little bit more when we get to that new business action item. I think those are uh, very good points for me. I appreciate you sharing those as well. Is there, is there anybody else on the policy committee that had anything to, to add? Okay. So uh, I don't believe uh, we have a need for a report for the nominating committee no. today as well. All right, thank you. So on the uh, next item on the agenda is old business. We actually don't have any old business items on this, so that means y'all did a good job uh, last time taking care of all the new business items. Um, but we do have uh, a couple, or we have three new business items on the agenda next. So the first would be uh, the approval to meet regularly with the finance committee and the executive board to discuss uh, budgeting and finance procedures. One of the things I'll kind of add some context to that. Um, so our fiscal year would be July 1 through June 30th. That's what's established. Several of our funding entities are established that way too, whether they be counties or whether they be cities or different maybe boards of education, right? So, but not everyone. Some are on a calendar year. So the issue becomes if, if we're only preparing for what you might consider budget time in the spring leading up to the, the end of a fiscal year, the beginning of a new fiscal year, then we may miss some of those uh, opportunities because, well, those that are on a, a calendar year that starts on a January one, those meetings will be much more effective in the fall than in the spring. So hopefully I've made sense with that, but do I hear a motion uh, for approval to meet regularly with the Finance Committee and the Executive Board to discuss budgeting and finance procedures? I so move. Thank you, Ruben. Do I hear a second? I second. Thank you, Mark. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Since uh, Pogelthorpe County is one of those red-headed stepchilds that does a uh, calendar year, <laughs> I just would like to point out that the, the commission, which is a major funder, the county commission, which is a major funder, wants us to have information in by July. So if we wait until September to do these things, then we would be too late. That's, that's a good point. I appreciate because that. Because they, they plan way ahead. And that's what we would like to do based on a lot of times we're, we're basing budgets on previous years and then making the adjustments whether it's categories but um, I think we're, we would be able to do that it would just be if there's if there's times to amend and make changes that we don't uh, we maybe meet more frequently but I think that's a great point I don't, I don't want to uh, create a delay when there's not a need for something. So we've had a motion in a second and we've had some discussion any further discussion on that? New business item. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The second on the new business item here, uh, front stuff, uh, state mileage fees. Um, so I will tell you, um, you're more than welcome to discuss it, but these are your state mileage fees. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't think we can discuss it. Yeah, you can see the rates there, but. That's what they are. So, uh, on a motorcycle, it's 65 50 cents per mile. Uh, on an automobile, it's 67 cents per mile, uh, per the state of Georgia. So, I hear a motion to approve the state mileage fees, as which we need to do the same way every year. Thank you, Donna. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, we'll give that to Fred. So. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. Thank you. Not 
Um, approval of the patron behavior behavior policy, uh, which does include language on, on escalation, right, and, and, and the, the, the banning based on certain behaviors after a certain number of warnings, part of the, the things that we were just talking about. Um, so so I'll, I'll maybe share my thoughts just a little bit on that, and then we can maybe see if we can discuss further. I, I don't want to table this item because I think it's important to try to have some updates. I'm not sure if everyone has seen the matrix that is a guideline current, currently that is not attached to this policy. My only concern with that being attached to the policy, I think it's good from a reference standpoint. However, I know maybe in my younger years, if I knew, well, I had three times to do something before there was actually any uh, repercussions mm -hmm. other than a verbal warning, that I may uh, use that against the policy rather than just responding on the, on the first warning as well. So I'm, I'm open to further discussion on that. No, I, I was just going to maybe jumping off of that point. I, Amelia, I understand where you're coming from because as a patron, I think there's a desire for transparency. But I also like the freedom and the flexibility. It's, if it's not a policy and it is, in fact, a guideline, you do have more flexibility. But the moment it's a policy, if it's not enforced for one patron and it is for another, then you have opportunity for people to perceive discrimination or come after you because you didn't apply it the exact same way every single time. And there are times you might want to extend a little bit more grace because of a situation you know about that if it's a guideline, I'm not married to that. So, I, and of course, coming from Franklin County, I don't have the challenges that, you know, an Athens Clark County Library branch has. So, I, I don't know, I probably lean at the moment unless everybody else has a different opinion to, to I like it being a guideline. And I don't know if there's some middle territory where there's something you want to expand that maybe gives that transparency, but I, I would be in favor of not attaching it to the policy itself. Okay. Any further discussion on that for the approval of the updated patron behavior policy? It reads awfully general to me. I don't mind the policy. Almost bureaucratic. I don't mind the policy being vague and not having this attached to it, but if it's not attached to it, there are just some parts of the policy that just don't sit right with me. And that's okay, we can make their own decision. That's just, I, I want the staff to be protected. I want the staff to have, absolutely, I want the staff to have the autonomy to use their discernment and their judgment, and I trust them to do so, so I hear what you're saying make it loose and let them escalate as they want. I don't have a problem with that. I, from my own anecdotal experience, see some of the things in this policy just read to me, and, and I'll use it, and also some of the things that I've heard from staff, not at my own branch, but of, you know, when we talk about smells, are we including babies' diapers? When we talk about you know, traffic or, or, you know, bags are really just looking at a certain type of person with a lot of bags. It just, that I can't quite reconcile, but I'm one member of this board, so everyone vote how they want to vote, and I, that's fine. I just wanted to be able to express my opinion. Any further discussion? Maybe it's because I walked out of the room, and I'm sorry about that, but that's all right. Um, are we talking about adding this where? The banning policy is... Oh, we're updating it? it? It's just slightly updated. Slightly so updated. do you want to raise... Uh... So there are two policies. Uh, there's the patient conduct policy, which is just updated. Okay. And then the, the banning policy is a new policy. Oh, okay. So the behavior policy was updated the behavior policy has been updated several times and, yes. and has existed. I, I, I couldn't find an original date, but it has existed since at least 2019. Okay. So, so you may be talking sure. about the behavior I'm policy. I'm talking about the behavior policy. We don't have a printed copy of that in front of us. Right. But that's what we are talking about on IMC right here, right? That's correct. So 
the banning policy, I actually did not have issue with. It was the patron, and I understand that it's existed. I don't think it's an inherently bad policy. There were just some parts of it that made me uncomfortable. So did we send out a behavior policy change? We, we, we set out the behavior policy. That's OK. We set out the, 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 behavior, the, con, the patron conduct and behavior policy. And we set out the banning policy. OK, so the behavior policy is not. That's what uh, we're doing it was, I think it was mailed to, uh, to everyone. I mailed it to the policy committee. Okay. okay, so we're missing that one. So, we need to see that before. <laughs> yeah, it would be good. So, I'm going to hang on. Okay. Uh, make sure I'm on the same page. So, we don't have a printed copy here, especially with the red lines of the changes to the patron behavior policy. That's the new business item that's on the agenda. I don't think we have enough information to vote on that today. You do have a copy of the banning policy, which is an amendment to the patron behavior policy. Please understand, banning is about patrons and not books. Um, but the, the one page banning policy, um, it seems as though we would be able to adopt this today, but we would need to come back next quarter on the revised patron behavior policy. <coughs> Based on what I'm understanding here, now I was maybe conflating or adding them together when they're maybe right. a little more complicated. But um, does that make sense? Or am I... Okay. And I'd like to point out that whatever, in whichever way the discussion about publishing the matrix goes, one way or the other, I don't think it's dependent on the banning policy because that would be part of the behavioral policy. Is that that. that Correct. If that, I think. Yeah. To clarify, the banning policy is a standalone, separate policy from the co the patron conduct and behavior policy. Okay. And so, if there was an issue that decided that the matrix needed to be published, it, it would be more appropriate to do it with the behavioral policy than the banning policy. I think. I think that. that I think that that's. Mis that's Amelia's suggestion is to include it with the behavioral policy. Right. Yeah. I'm I not... think that's one route. Yes. Right. There's also I think and I can um, I haven't had a chance to get back to you, but um, there are also just some little elements of the verbiage that I did not sit right with. Me. Oh, in, in the matrix. Well, no, in the pa the matrix is very good. I okay. like it. It was the it was the actual policy. I I thought. All right, so I'm, I'm going to do my best to corral this here. And I think Mike, made some great points as well. So um, here, here's, here's what I would request. So on new business item 11C, approval of the updated patron behavior policy specifically, I would request that we get a motion to table that until our April meeting. So moved. Thank you, Jane. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you, Mike. Any further discussion? Yeah, we, why don't we have a dreaded Zoom meeting within the next two weeks? Get this out to everybody so we can read it. Then vote. So, or do you want to wait until April? That would be a follow up thing, but I still think we got to table it today. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a good point. I'm just not sure about the schedule. So, we will continue with the patron behavior policy that has been approved. It's in place. Mm -hmm. It's in place, yeah. Sure. So, so I've got any further discussion on tabling the patron behavior policy? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I didn't hear any opposed, but it's okay if something doesn't vote. All right, so. The next item, I'd like somebody to, we'll, we'll uh, amend the, if someone will make a motion to amend the agenda to add the approval of the banning policy for persons who violate library policy um, as 11, the new 11D. I so move. Thank you, Thank you Peggy. Thank mm -hmm. you. Any discussion? All right, so we're adding it to the agenda. So all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Right, so now banning policy is on the agenda because that's the one page piece of paper we have in front of you. <coughs> it seems as though that is what we, maybe me, uh, have, have added with, with some of the other ones. 
But it seems as though this is, even if it's vague, this is relatively short and relatively straightforward. Um, I do have a question about that, because I may have confused what Amelia had brought for us. Because I haven't seen what you've seen, so I may, I may just not have been fully cognizant of what you were trying to articulate. But the language in the banning policy that we're actually looking at, so this matrix that I haven't seen, don't know what it is. The second paragraph in this policy says, based on a guideline of offenses and consequences established by the library. So is that matrix actually attached? Not, not to be publicized. I mean, is that the matrix we're referring to? The matrix that we're referring to is available to staff on the intranet. Right. Um, and it's it it is a guideline. Right. Which for, is, yeah, that's what right. it says. A guideline. Right. I just mm -hmm. wanted to see if that's the guideline we're talking about. Yes. So I can separate it in my mind from the other policy, which is something else entirely. So it is a the other the policy them. we the current policy and so you may want to share what uh, any differences there were in the two I'm policies. Sorry. I don't I can't, think I it's can't hear with what it was going on behind me. Well, I didn't hear the question. If I, you if you want to share what the differences is in the old approved policy and the changes that we made in the new policy in the conduct and behavior policy. Yes. We're, we're, well, we're just on banning. Okay. Yeah. You know, I will simplify, simplify my question. Okay. The banning policy is completely new. Right. Fre it's, it's fresh. Yes. Uh, yeah. The, the reference made in the new banning policy that refers to guidelines, mm -hmm. those guidelines, are they the matrix that already exists or we're creating them in our local branches at our own discretion? No. This is referring to the banning policy, the banning matrix that, that exists to staff on the intranet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just, because in my head that was attached to the other policy. I'm just trying to, and it may be attached to both. I'm just trying to get it clear in my head. It's referenced, I think, referenced, but not attached. Right, and that's fine. I'm fine yeah. with that. And let me muddy the situation right now. <laughs> uh, is the matrix that is on the intranet um, different from the published rules of a given library. Uh, we, we had to deal with this with a, a patron at our uh, at our meeting this month. A, uh, per, a person who had abridged the rules of the library, been warned, da, 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 and ended up being banned. Are those rules different from this matrix that are the guidelines? No. Are they the same? Yes. Thank you. He, that patron was banned according to what his behavior, but they were. That what I, my point is that they were. They're published. Yeah, they're available to the public. They're they're available to staff. The, the, the matrix. The matrix is available to the staff. Hello. Oh. <laughs> but the, but, but they, the matrix is available to staff. But the um, uh, the actual policies uh, for behavior policy is available online. It is available at the entrance of all of our right. libraries. Yeah, yes. That, yes. That was my point. Those yes. things are available to patrons as they come in the library. Yes. So it, it, there's, there's, there are no secrets. There, no. there, there are no secrets. Thank you. There Thank are you. no secrets. Thank you. <laughs> there may be secrets in the dark. So those, those <laughs> rules of conduct, I'm sorry, it just is important to me. So the rules are, you said, posted at the library yes. and online. Mm -hmm. And then I assume, and those are comprehensive, right? So it yes. says, like, no sleeping. Yes. Or no, I'm, I'm asking. And, yes. Excuse me, Amelia. They were, I also found out, because this was new to me, that there's a uh, essentially a small card that is available for people to pick up. So it's not like it's stuck on a wall someplace and you have to go look for it. And I have no issue with setting guidelines, right? I just want to make sure that they are thoughtful and just in how they, they are perceived and come and executed. Um, okay, and then when, and, and maybe this is just at the discretion of the staff member, when they're, yeah. is that warning, is there then like, and the next time this happens, is that yes. a verbal? And, and in between then, in between all of those, if you are in Athens Clark County, which is the county that's having the most um, of these issues, 
um, you are referred to the social worker, and all of that is in is part of the staff guidelines. And is and I'm sorry, I have so many questions, but I think it's relevant. So um, now, does the the social worker work for the region or the just the Athens Park County? Just right now, she. She works for Athens Clark County, but she has done training for the region and will continue to do so. And if I may add just one more from our experience this month, the person was not just warned verbally of that happened, but then there was a written report that the person was, was handed as well as emailed in terms of the warnings and so forth. So the, the gradations should have been apparent. Yes, we keep incident reports, uh, all of the libraries do incident reports for uh, behaviors that have, um, that are against the, the behaviors of the library, the convict uh, behavior policy. So any, any further discussion, and I think, again, this is, this is kind of the, the minutia, right, of how, how we get through on, on Adopting policies and updating policies and, and thinking about things not just in one specific instance, but, but on all sides of it, right? Um, is the, but is there any further discussion on the uh, banning policy for persons who violate library policy? Okay. So, do I have a motion on that agenda? I'll make a motion to accept the banning policy. Thank you, Ruben. Is there a second? A second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Now, that was almost the last thing on the agenda. Here, here's the challenge I'll have about the items at the table, because we've talked a lot about, and, and I, I apologize because I was maybe confusing some of those things together as well. Um, my challenge will be to the policy committee to meet regarding the red line patron behavior policy, however that meeting has occurred. Let me know if I need to help facilitate that electronically, conference call, whatever the case might be, uh, to come with a cohesive recommendation from the policy committee back to this board. That may allow us to have a call meeting. I can't guarantee that it will. Uh, prior to the April meeting, at the very latest, we would plan to discuss that at the April meeting based on a clear and concise recommendation from the policy committee. I will set up a meeting with the policy committee. Thank you, Don. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, and then we'll all have the same sheet of paper as it might be. Any further announcements? I do, actually. Uh, I wanted to share with you all uh, Darcy Calia, uh, our uh, public information officer, has created a year in review um, for the region. And you can see some pretty wonderful statistics that are here that uh, the region and our five counties and 11 branches have accomplished. So please take a look at it. Uh, it includes all of us. Thank you. Any further announcements? Seeing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 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 Right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much.